Hello world, welcome back to Agile on the Trail. And this is me explaining what a retrospective is. In the real world, in the information technology field that I practice in, we do have a mindset of Agile, meaning we're always looking for ways to improve and doing things better. And in that mindset, we have a couple of frameworks, one of which is being Scrum, and in Scrum, we have what's called a retrospective. It's an event. And in the event, we usually have the teams, and just the team, get together and really hash out what happened that week, or two weeks, or a month, whatever length of the um, work cycle was. In this case, we're gonna be reviewing what really happened on the trail as I attempted through the first week, April 2nd through April 8th, week one of the Appalachian Trail through hike attempt. So this is the retrospective that I will be sharing with you. Uh, there will be several video edits as I recall certain events, look up certain notes and share them with you. All right, so let's get into it. All right. So let's talk about Sunday, April the 2nd. I'm going to do this by day by day. Started off at uh, Stover Creek Shelter and hiked to Gooch Mountain Shelter. It was a long day. It wasn't my longest day, although I think eh, maybe it was. 12.9 miles for that day. I just had done the, the approach. And the highlights of that day really was uh, probably the toughest climb of the week, which was up Sassafras. And during that ascent up Sassafras, I ran into a guy that was at the uh, encampment back uh, at Stover Creek by the name of Marshall. And he and I ended up just hiking the rest of the day together, being uh, two older gentlemen going about the same pace and lo and behold we had a lot of similar interests and it just made the day go by just so much faster so that was the beginning i didn't know it then but it was the beginning of a tramley the sassafras ended up being the benchmark of all ascents so far uh, throughout the whole week sassafras has been pretty much the toughest ascent during the week pushing those miles while it was good to do that to do close to 13 miles in that day did really tax me quite a bit I was, I was very exhausted at the end of that once I got to Gooch Mountain Shelter and on top of that getting into shelters late means you don't get the prime camp spots or shelter spots oh well so that is a lesson learned from day number one on the trail day two of the Appalachian Trail had me wake up at Gooch Mountain with the intent to hike to Lance Creek restoration campsite and that we did it ended up being a plus mile hike and during that travel, Marshall and I pretty much solidified the fact that we were the beginnings of a tramley. I mean, definitely him and I had the same pace and same goals. And it was good. I mean, the day went well. Fear mongering of the weather started quite early. And this is something that's very common on the trail, fear mongering. And it could be anything. It could be the weather. It, it, it can be, you know, people on the trail, um, uh, the conditions of the trail, just anything, really. And, yeah, and I fell victim to it a little bit. I finally got sick and tired of it, I think, after a day or two. And just said, you know what, the weather's going to be the weather. Let it be. Uh, it's nice to know maybe what's going to happen but what actually happens ended up being completely different so fear mongering is a real thing on the trail and how much you want to buy into it how much you want to talk it up or talk it down or whatever is is really up to you 
uh, when it comes to the weather, is it a nice day? Is it a bad day? As long as you're prepared for it. That's my, my lesson learned for that day. I think we saw our first wildlife on that day, which was a big black snake and a couple of insects, really. We haven't seen any deer on the trail whatsoever. We haven't seen any bear on the trail. We haven't seen any Sasquatches on the trail. Just, uh, just some, you know, a couple snakes eventually. Did find a smaller black snake or something. Uh, I think later in the day or maybe the next day. But yeah, day two wasn't much. You know, a nice, easy eight plus mile day after a strenuous almost 13 mile day and that was that was pretty much wraps up day two on the trail all right day three on the trail which would have been tuesday april the fourth uh this found us going from lance creek restoration area to Neal's Gap, which is a very famous gap on the trail because it's 31.3 miles on the trail. And it is well known for the fact the trail runs right through uh, the outfitter there. And this is where a lot of people quit. Tramley started forming up just nicely on this day. Uh, to include Mike and Kat, husband-wife duo, that are attempting the Appalachian Trail for the second time. The first time they were unfortunately unable to complete it because Kat uh, stress fractured her foot. I think they were almost halfway through, if I recall correctly. Anyways, good people, good times. We also bumped into the twins. Uh, these are actual twin sisters. They're in their mid-twenties. They were playing the musical instruments in my earlier video. Uh, one of his name is Kath, and the other one is Tor. Those aren't trail names. Those are just the, the shortened version of their names that they go by, Kath and Tor. And we, we had a lot of fun hanging out with them. And then one other older gentleman, uh, 65, uh, Dow is his name. And that's our family. Dow, Mike, Kat, Kath, Tor, Marshall, and myself. And that was our family at Neil's Gap. And the plan was to uh, get to Neil's Gap, shelter up there, which we all did. The bunkhouse there was eight people, or no, 10 people. And we took up all but, I think, three bunks. And uh, But the bunkhouse was full by the end of the night with a couple other hikers we much appreciated getting in and having a shorter day that day i think we only did like seven plus that day and oh yeah blood mountain blood mountain was this day so the thing about blood mountain the ascent isn't hard if you're going northbound the ascent isn't hard at all however the descent off of blood mountain into Neil's Gap. It is brutal. So earlier we had mentioned Sassafras being the uh, number one ascent or toughest ascent. Well, number one descent that we as a tramway have agreed upon was Blood Mountain. And I feel bad for all the day hikers and section hikers who are going southbound on the Appalachian Trail to get to the top of Blood Mountain because they're climbing up a very steep, rocky, arduous climb. And we saw some people on there going up. They were not prepared for what was ahead of them. And we were going down and we were hurting. And it's a, it's a good two miles. It seemed like it drug on forever. But the view up there on Blood Mountain was absolutely spectacular. It was a bit windy. And the descent was brutal. And 
you know, once we got to Neil's Gap, it was just nice to know that we had a bunkhouse, we had a common area to ourselves, that, you know, we all knew where we we're going to sleep, we we're going to be out of the elements. It's nice to stay at that outfielder there. Can't remember what it is. Future Ken put the outfitter name right up here. I should know it's a very famous outfitter name. Anywho, uh, yeah, staying at a hostel, staying at an outfielder like that, staying in a bunkhouse, very enjoyable. However, we all agreed the next morning that, well, it wasn't very pleasant in the bunkhouse. It was very, I mean, 10 people stuffed in a room sleeping. While you're out of the elements and, and everything else is very nice, it was it was a bit stuffy. We liked it. It wasn't you know bad. It was thirty five dollars for for everybody or for for each person for the night. Uh, and once the bunkhouse was full, they just closed it down. You know, no more reservations on the bunkhouse. It's first come, first serve. Luckily, uh, Marshall and I ended up being the last two people into the bunkhouse. The twins were already in. Dow was already in, uh, Mike and Kat were already in, so the whole family was already in, just uh, Marshall and I were, were the last two to sign up, and we were the last two to fill the spots, so it closed down, and that brings us to the closure of day three on the Appalachian Trail for this week. Day four of the Appalachian Trail was Wednesday, April the 5th where we left Neil's Gap and headed to Low Gap Shelter. And our newly formed Tramley uh, suffered, I'm not gonna say suffered, but basically changed. We realized that uh, everybody had a little bit of a different agenda for the day. We wanted to stay together, but some of us were not able to. And sadly, we lost to twins. We didn't lose the twins. They just, uh, they had other priorities for the day and uh, they acted on that, which they should, because, you know, it's their hike as well. They should hike their own hike. They shouldn't be, you know, uh, pressured into doing what the tramley wants to do. If, if uh, the tramley decides that they're going to push on faster than you're ready to, then, you know, do what you need to do as a hiker. And that's what we learned that day. And while they did hike part of the trail, we found out through Instagram, they, they fell behind and throughout the course of the week, we haven't caught up with them. Now, it doesn't mean we're not going to cross their path. We're definitely probably going to cross our path at like Damascus or uh, maybe they'll push some extra miles after we take a zero or Nero uh, in the future and we may bump into the twins again. I hope we do. They are a lot of fun to hang out with and uh, they're accomplished musicians as well, which is rather refreshing on the trail. Other than that, uh, from Neil's Gap to uh, Low Gap Shelter, you know, once again, we learned you know, the later you get into a shelter, the uh, less likelihood you have of getting a prime real estate. It's unfortunate. But other than that, so it was an uneventful 11 plus mile hike. All right, going into day five. Day five of the Appalachian Trail was Thursday I have to do the math in my head and it found us going from low gap campsite shelter low gap shelter to what was originally planned as Blue Mountain shelter when we got to Blue Mountain this is the first time that the tramway really kind of sat down tramway being uh, Dow Mike Cat Marshall and myself and just having a, a, a good discussion. And this was like 1.32 o'clock in the afternoon going, hey, do we really want to just call it a day here or do we want to push some extra miles? And we all agreed to push a couple extra miles, three to be exact, a little bit over three, to Unicoi Gap. So we would be coming off the mountain, down into the gap, and then cross the road and go up a little bit to a stealth site. And this is the first time we stealth site meaning that we're not on an official campsite or official shelter. It's just a camping area that's along the trail. And 
this is where like the tramway really kind of got together. All five of us were just there camping, no one else around. And we still got there with decent amount of daylight left, but we were all exhausted. Like as soon as the sun set, we were gone, down, you know, tired and stuff. But we, we still had some fun. As you saw in the, uh, the video for that day, Marshall had some uh, <laughs> hilarious issues trying to do his bear hang. And that was the first time I think we all tried to do a bear hang for this, this uh, Appalachian Trail attempt. I know Kat and Mike had already done a previous attempt and did bear hangs, but uh, Dal made his attempt on the first throw. I made my attempt on the first throw. Marshall, not so much. Uh, however, it was very nice to have a water source right there and to put your feet into the water source and like, uh, you know, just the, the water, the cold water, you know, washing over your feet stuff really was refreshing. But yeah, day five was a, a good day. It was, it was a really good day. All right, let's move on to day six. Day six, Friday, April the 7th. This is where we went from the stealth site of uh, Unicoi Gap to, excuse me, Addis uh, campsite. Something of a stealth site is really, I, I believe it was officially a campsite. Can't remember on far out, but that was the gap tenting area that we agreed upon. And it was a bit of a miserable cold day. We had fog, we had rain, we had wind, we had colder temperatures. But most importantly, that was the day that we all passed Trey Mountain Shelter. And why is this shelter so important? Well, one, that was my endpoint for my plan for the week. If I would have made it by end of day Saturday at Trey Mountain Shelter, I would have accomplished something rough of eight miles a day, which was you know a goal that I was hoping to hit. Now that I'm exceeding it, nice. So we're past Trey Mountain. And we get in there one season, two seasons. Mike and Kat were there first, and then uh, Marshall and I were there. However, Dow was somewhere in between us, and he didn't show up. And we started worrying about Dow. Sorry, car. And Mike and Kat left, and then Marshall and I left the shelter for lunch. Continued the hike to Addis Gap. Come to find out, we suffered a loss. Dal's replacement knee gave out uh, down the other side of Trey Mountain. He was okay. He was mobile. He was he wasn't in great pain. He can hobble around a bit, but we all found him alongside the trail. Some other hikers had, had helped him contact search and rescue of Towns County. And they were already dispatching people to come and uh, pull him off the mountain. So Towns County, Georgia, search and rescue. Thank you guys for helping our friend Dal out and getting him off of the mountain. I know we, uh, we talked to a few of you. Uh, Marshall and I, as you guys came onto the trail from the, uh, the Forest Service Road access onto the Appalachian Trail. So thank you guys very much. We really appreciate you guys helping our friend Dow out. And Dow, uh, hopefully it's not too serious with your knee. Uh, you're able to rehabilitate it to the point where you can come out and hike with us again. We would love to see you out there. And, uh, you know, Godspeed on your, your healing process and your recovery. And for sure, please try to catch up with us at Damascus. We'd love to see you out there, all of us, even the Terra Twins, I'm sure. Uh, it's always a good time hanging with you. So, but yeah, uh, people coming and going on the trail. The statistics don't lie. You know, 25% tend to drop their through hike attempt going northbound at Mules Gap. Uh, about another 25% drop for various reasons um i think through the mount through the smokies yeah through the smokies which is coming up here for us in a week or two and then after that it's uh another 25 percent drop before the end 
But technically, we're in the upper 20, uh, 75th percentile. We've already made it past the first 25% mark. Now we're just have to get through the smoke just get past the, uh, the second 25% um, mark. But regardless, that was what happened. Pushing on to Addis Gap, it was a difficult hike. You know, long hikes, back to back to back, little rest. But the main reason why we were doing this is we knew the next day, Saturday, the last day of the week, was a short day, 5.5 miles, to Dix Creek Gap and on to a near zero and then followed by a zero. So we did it. We got to Addis Gap. It was cold. It was windy. It was rain. The water source was like a third of a mile down a hill. And we had relatively good spots, thanks to Mike and Kat. They, uh, they forged ahead and was able to pick out some prime spots for Mike and myself. Unfortunately, Dow couldn't make it. He had to get off the mountain. So the four of us camped out at Addis Gap, woke up the next day. Well, future me will now discuss day seven. Hey, future me here. Uh, day seven, Addis Gap to Dix Creek Gap. This is the culmination of the whole week for the Tramley and for myself. We, uh, we made arrangements, Mike and Kat it's going to take the shuttle into Hiawassee and find some lodging and take a near zero. And I think they might have taken a zero the next day or they might do a, a near zero again and hike a little bit. However, the plan is for the tramway to get back together on Monday, end of day, at the North Carolina border to celebrate crossing over. That's the plan. Marshall, well, he lives in this area. This Georgia is his, his home state, and he lived about an hour away. So he called his dad, and his dad picked him up, and they graciously agreed to uh, also take me into Cornelia, Georgia, to uh, find a hotel, which I did. And then uh, to take an euro and a zero, which I am doing. Lessons learned for the whole week. Tramley comes and goes. The tramley you start with may not be the tramley you end with. And this week has proven that already. And it's only been one week. The people on the trail are absolutely fabulous. The camaraderie, the help, support just is there people helping each other out i need a little bit of help i was out of water you know marshall helped me out there uh some people had um some ailments and i had you know ibuprofen with me or you know tums or whatever and i was able to help them out it's all about you know just helping each other out in whatever situation even if it's so small uh, Marshall gave a lighter to uh, a girl named Emily, one of two Emilys that we found on the trail uh, during the course of the week, because her lighter gave out or something. And Marshall had a spare lighter, and he's like, just here, just take it. And she was so appreciative of the fact that, you know, now she can have hot food and, and whatnot uh, with that little lighter. It's the little things that really matter, and that's, that's what really kind of stood out on the trail is the fact that when you're on the Appalachian Trail and you're carrying basically your home on your back, you realize what little you need to get by, but you also realize that it's the little things that can really make a huge difference. Um, so yeah, day seven, it was a miserable day. We were wet, I mean, it rained, it, we woke up, it was still windy, it was still rainy. No one wanted to crawl out of their tent. And, but we eventually did. And for once, Marshall and I were the first out of the camp, out of the tramway, and we never lost that position. We usually get past because we're old and slow. But uh, we made it 5.5 miles to Dick's Creek Gap. 
trail angels. Oh my. Let's talk about trail angels. I haven't talked about trail angels yet. Uh, trail angels. You guys rock. I mean, I heard about this in videos and everything else. And of course, now you're hearing it in my video. But trail angels absolutely rock. Uh, mountain squid. Thank you very much. You were the first trail angel I encountered. Uh, Roy, you're another trail angel that I encountered. Bandit, another one that I encountered. And then uh, the trail angels that were at Dick's Creek Gap at the very end of the week. You know, having your, they had two um, pop-up shelters to get people out of the rain. That seating, they were doing you know, uh, uh, not burritos, um, but like, uh, man, I can't think of what the, the term is, but anyways, like soft tacos, basically. Um, soft tacos, hot apple cider spiked with Jim Beam, still really good. <laughs> that was just so pleasant to see. Trail angels on the trail really do make a huge difference. And it, they're, they are such a huge morale booster on the trail when you do come across a trail angel. And hopefully going forward, we will see that all the way up through Maine. But yeah, trail angels, you guys rock. Oh, let me think here. Closing out the retrospective. Well, in all honesty, one of the reasons why we have a retrospective, why we talk about all, you know, what our experience was, how we, how things went for the time period that we are talking about, which in this case is one week, is what did we learn? And upon those learnings, what can we apply going forward? Uh, I would say my biggest learning on the trail, you know, was my capabilities, you know, learning what I can and cannot do physically my knees did hurt at times um, my lower back did cause me some issues at times but if I slowed down if I took things a little easier I was able to manage those a couple things that crept up that I wasn't expecting I carried too much food way too much food oh my pack was so heavy I ended up throwing away food I did sadly I did threw away some food but uh but the lesson learned now is going into this second week, I think I have a better food management plan. I am removing some things from my pack that I didn't use at all during the week. So hopefully my pack will be a few pounds lighter. My, my, uh, my physical capabilities have increased a, a, quite a bit. We've all noticed that we're able to uh, climb, ascend faster, descend faster, communicate better with each other and we're hoping those skill sets continue to strengthen going into week number two all right well i hope you guys had a great week hope you're enjoying these videos i know i haven't mentioned this but you know like subscribe share it's youtube join me for week number two and uh yeah let's hike on see you guys next time